Welcome to You in HD, your identity in higher definition with Pastor Eric Miller. Join us in our journey of faith in God by taking an in-depth look into the Bible's authority and sufficiency to guide us in our Christian walk. Discover your identity in Jesus Christ today. So what can be said about the new modern man that is now going on in the world today? And when I say the modern man, I mean the man that has pretty much been is becoming so devalued by society. You only see really a few types of men out there as it is. You only see the homosexual that's on television, across news medias. You see the effeminate man that looks everything from the, the skin tight uh, suits to the where it looks more like the glam rock days of rock with have more makeup on, more prim and pricked eyebrows and just all around cute guy. And then goes back to the dog, the man that every woman can relate to, that that pesteredly bad man that is constantly, honestly, given a lot of love because there's not a shortage of of opportunities for this man to exist. You got every woman that's scantily clad from models to Facebook wannabes, Google Plus wannabes, you know, your favorite media outlet wannabes, Instagram got thousands of them. Everything can can open the door to these types of men. The effeminate man is well-liked. The homosexual man is well-liked. But the Christian man is not well-liked or well-received. Nor does he, they want to even hear from this kind of man. They simply don't want to hear from this type of man now you have to ask the question why why don't they want to hear from this type of man well it's simple because this type of man is dangerous to everything that has been that that's being talked about in society today this man is totally dangerous why is this man dangerous because he represents that which god supports and listen to what i'm telling you that kind of man, the Christian man, the man that is not effeminate, the man that is the head of his home, the man that, that God has made first to be the priest, the head, and the leader in his home. Oh, that man's got to go. They got to kill that man any way they can. The devil is smart. Find a way to devalue men by promoting and highlighting all that makes men bad. You know, contrary to belief, majority of men ain't bad. It's the minority that's, that's, that's tearing us down. And guess what? The mon- minority is being amplified, brothers and sisters. They're being amplified more than you can imagine. More than you can imagine. So what what happens when this type of man continues to keep getting promoted? It becomes easy to start taking pop shots at men. It becomes easy to take pop shots at men. It becomes simple. It becomes funny. It becomes a, a catchphrase. It becomes everything that is wrong with people today. You got any number of women that can tear down a man and and, and, and and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying there's some that you know there's not some issues out there that men have done some wrong things to women. I'm not saying that that's not true. But we're not the sole responsibility about and we can't take that as men. We can't sit there and take the sole responsibility for somebody else's bad choice in men. That simply does not work. Simply does not work. 
So what kind of men does God say that needs to happen? What kind of men? Well, I'm going to talk to you about that. Let's look at our Bibles. Something that was told, something was across social media today. Um, a picture. I mean, I've seen it several times. I mean, there's several. There's another picture that goes across. I'm sure everybody can relate to it and seen it. It takes a a man with dreams, but a woman with vision, for it to come to pass. That's a lie. That's not even close to truth. Nope. Never has been. Never will be. What's the other one I heard today? Was um. God, it's so it's so bad. It's here. Let me pull it up because I have to. I want to make sure I, I, I quote this right. That it said that God. I mean, sorry, Adam was so lonely that God created Eve. And to see how many amens that went down that list of likes and pluses. It should make you sick because obviously all those people watching with amens and plus and amens have yet to read a Bible have gone through Genesis. Nowhere in our Bible do you hear that kind of weird explanation. Adam is so lonely that God created Eve. First of all, how would Adam even know what loneliness was when he was designed and built for a purpose. Doesn't even make sense. But they want you to believe it and smell it and taste it and talk about it. Here it is, verse 20, Genesis chapter 2. The man gave names to all the livestock, to the birds of the sky, to every wild animal. But for the man, no helper was found as his compliment. Does that sound like he's hurt and lonely and broke and just can't handle anything? That doesn't sound like some broken, whimsical, weak-spirited man. I, I'm just so lonely and tore up. No, he's looking for a helpmate. Does it say anything about loneliness? Did we get any idea that he said, Lord, I'm just, I'm just broke? You don't hear any of that. You hear what has been promised. God told him, I'm going to create a helpmate for you. And that's exactly what he was looking for. It wasn't a a point of loneliness. It was a point of expectation. God says it. Adam had no reason to sit there and doubt God. There was no doubting of God at this point. Period. You know why? Because God is who God is. He keeps all of his word. If he says something will happen, it will come to pass. Plain and simple. So that's just one example of it. The other one, it takes a man. You know, a man can have dreams, but it takes a woman to vision. Last time I checked, that's unnecessary. When a man has dreams, it takes God to be involved in that process, and he's the one that supplies the dream, and he supplies the vision, and we need his strength to carry it through. Let's not get it twisted. Let's get off this bandwagon of damaging men and making men feel lesser than what they are, to support some agenda that only the devil has been has been manipulated and pushing through. What what easier way is there than to have men looked at as just we just are just weepy, teary eyed people who just really don't know how to handle life without a woman. We just really don't know what to do. You got commercials that you can see every day of the week. Of a man walking around, can't make a decision for himself, just outright dopey and dumb and just inept at being a man. And what will we do without this woman who is the brain, the smarts, and all of these things? Notice, it's always the same. It's the dopey, ignorant, inept leader until some woman comes along and just and is the voice of logic and reason and is the intelligent one and the man is just incapable of making a good decision on his own only the devil could manipulate something like that and he's been doing it successfully for years now 
years he's been successful at this. Years. So let's go ahead and read and let's, look, let's do some research. What does God talk about the effeminate man? Let's take a look. Let's get knee deep and figure out where did God talk about the effeminate man? Well, we don't have to look too far. Let's go to our Bibles. And we're going to go. Let's see. I hope everybody got their Bibles out today. And, and again, I'm not reading this to, to hurt people's feelings. But people need to see what the truth is out there. That's what Man Week is about. We're trying to get to the point of what it is to be a man. A real godly man. Not some macho, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, overly egotistical. No, we're talking about a man of God. That's meek, humble, yet strong and sturdy in God. It's foundation unshakable in God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, nor fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Effeminate. Let's, do some, let's look into that word effeminate. Let's look into it. Now, what is the word effeminate? What does it mean? Let's pull out the trusty dictionary. Let's look it up. If you hear some clicking, it's because I'm going into my, I'm on my Mac, and I'm trying to, I love using the dictionary app in here. I just, because it goes across Wikipedia, it just covers everything, and I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. So let's take a look at the word effeminate. And right now my internet is running extremely slow. But I think I got it. Alrighty. Looks like I can't pull it up, so we're going to have to go the old-fashioned way. Type it in, and let's take a look. And hey, here we go. Having or showing characteristics regarding as typical of a woman. Feminine. Foppish. Unmanly. Behaviors, mannerism, and nature that is more akin to feminine. Delicate. Look at that word. Delicate. Something that, why, what is God talking about? That's cold-blooded, right? I mean, is that the kind of man we want? Is that the kind of man you want leading your church? Do you know that's probably why a lot of men don't... Well, it's not just probably as a, a huge contribution to it. A lot of men can't go to church when they're watching sermons that are geared toward women. You can listen to T.D. Jakes, and I can honestly... I say given, and When I say he giving given a sermon, I use that word loosely with quotation marks because... I don't, that man hasn't preached a sermon in so long. I don't know what to tell you, but it's always female orientated. It's always based on the woman. It's always it's never addressing men. It's never addressing what men can do to be stronger and to be more active in as the head of their family. How to be righteous in God? No, it's to sell seats. There is no, it is no secret that there are more women in church than men. Well, why? There's not enough men around? No, there's more than enough men around. The problem is there's not enough examples of men being promoted and spread around. That's the problem. There's not enough men being talked about and spread around because we are far and few between. They go to ch strong men go to churches and they quickly leave churches because they're not represented in the church. Pastors weak, the sermons are weak. There's no teaching. There's no meat on. There's no meat to eat. He does better sitting at home watching watching bad football, even though that's not true. But that's what most men are thinking. I've, I've talked to them, and I mean most men. I'm, I'm telling you what is a pervasive thing I've noticed from men. Yeah, I don't mind. I love the Lord, but man, every time I go to that church, that, that pastor don't speak to me. 
I hear men say this to me all the time. Well, I don't feel like he's talking to me. He's always, you know, my wife's always at church. There's always women functions. There's no men functions. There's none. We could be on the we'd be on the usher board and we could be deacons, but we're not teaching anything. Because we, we're not we don't have a pastor in the church that can teach us. We don't have anybody in the church teaching us. But we do have people pushing us out of the church. The devil. Bad sermons. No clear leadership that we can follow and adhere to and say that is a man of God and I want to follow him. It's just not happening. Not it's not prevalent enough. It's not it's not it's not happening enough. It's not manufactured enough. It's not promoted enough in a church. And you know full well it ain't promoted outside the church. Again, all you gotta do is look, go back and look at the three categories of being that's being promoted today: homosexuals, metrosexuals, and just the, just the dog man. That's it. No loyalty. I challenge any one of y'all listening today. Go through your Facebook page or your favorite social media of note. Find how many people will post about something good about men. That does not include a woman making him better. I had to add that in there because you're going to see it. Find how many you can count. Count on, can you find them on one hand? Can you count at least on one hand how many times you see men honored and encouraged to be good men and, and, and women and men saying thank you for being a decent man? That has nothing to do with the female, but it has everything to do with them as men taking care of business at home. Taking care of business with God. And I make I can make a bold statement to say you will barely see maybe five in a feed in any given day. But watch how many posts you see of a woman being encouraged to be without a man. That she makes a man better. Couldn't be nothing without her. Mamas are the best thing in the universe, but there's no fathers being talked about. No father being elevated and encouraged to, to, to be looked at as a man that, that should be respected and, 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 and honored and revered. You don't see any of that, do you? No, you're probably not going to see that much. I guarantee, I guarantee you, you will see a heck of a lot more posts encouraging women, very few encouraging men. We men are an endangered species. And if we don't look after each other, we are going to keep getting separate and pushed out and pushed out until we can't even find each other. We have so much we have to do as men in the Christian body and in our homes, but we have a responsibility to each other. We have to encourage each other to do better. We have to encourage each other to look after each other, to to fight for each other, to love each other, to lift each other up and encourage each other to be decent men and good men and better men. We have to want those things for each other. Men, we need to stand together as men. We need women who want real men. Without the head, we are lost. Without the right people and the right encouragement that supports the right thinking Christian man, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. You have just listened to You in HD. Your identity in Jesus Christ with Pastor Eric Miller. This ministry is made possible by your thoughtful prayers and donations. Join us each week as we continue to explore our Christian identity in Jesus Christ. May God richly bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.